A new Shonen star is here. Or is it? Kagurabachi is Shonen Jump's brand new series that was unveiled on September 17th of 2023. There has been a lot of buzz about this series since it was announced way before the actual chapter dropped. It had a ton of dejectors, a ton of fans before anyone had seen a single panel. I believe for the most part, the reason why this series had so much energy behind it is because we are in this period where plenty of the major players are on their way out. Jujutsu Kaisen, My Hero, and One Piece are all entering their final stages. And when they're gone, there haven't been too many series that seem to be on par or have the potential to take their place. So the conversation now becomes, do any of these newer series have the potential to take over the limelight once Shonen Jump's major players have reached their conclusion? And that question is now being placed on the shoulders of Kagurabachi. And with its first chapter now being finally out for everyone to see, does it hold up? No, not really. I understand that that is a lot to ask of a first chapter. Typically, we don't really know if these series are going to take off once they even hit past the 10, 20, 30 chapter mark. And even if they get that far, they have the potential of being axed like so many that have come before. As of right now, it seems the consensus is that Kagurabachi's first chapter was on the lukewarm side. Plenty of people are considering this a very mid or not so great entry into the series itself. A lot of the visuals are stuff we've seen before. The story patterns are things we've seen before. A sword wielding boy in the streets of Japan against mafia and sorcerers. We get it, Bleach, Jutsu Kaisen, Demon Slayer, we've seen this stuff. But something that Kagurabachi does with its portrayal of this story really resonated with me. And I feel like it's something that not many people picked up on during their first read through. So what was it? What was so interesting to me about Kagurabachi? Let's go over it. Hey guys, it's your boy Johnny Star here with a little bit of an editor's note. I made an oopsie. For some reason, I kept calling the main character Chihiro Shinichiro, as in Shinichiro Watanabe. I don't know why I kept doing this. I must have had Kaula Bebop on the brain or something, but I made the little mistake and I say his name a lot, so it's kind of super noticeable. Just wanted to get that out there and clear the air. My apologies, won't happen again. Anyway, now you know that, continue watching the video. Bye, I'm good at my job, sorry. So for those of you who didn't read it, Kagurabachi starts off with its introduction to our main character, Shinichiro. He is the apprentice to a blacksmith who creates special types of swords, that blacksmith being his dad. The first half of the story goes over his relationship with his dad and their day-to-day -day being blacksmiths. Shinichiro being the main character, all of this is shown through his perspective. Breaking down the nuances of his dad's behavior from being a super serious swordsman to a silly man who gets excited over buying goldfish. After a somewhat eerie conversation between Shinichiro and his dad, we immediately jump three years into the future, where Shinichiro is hunting and cutting down mafia men in search of sorcerers, brandishing a brand new scar on his face and a much darker, tougher demeanor. What happened between those two points of time? Where Shinichiro got this brand new scar on his face? What do these mafia people have to do with any of it is all left up in the air. And I think this is a very interesting way to introduce your fans to your story in a shonen. This is not normal. You don't normally see this. In Naruto, One Piece, Bleach, Dragon Ball, any of the big series that you can think of, they all show you the character's motivation and conflict right away. We get right to the details. Everyone talks out their emotions, what they're thinking, what they want. You get introduced to the world and what is going on almost immediately. Kakurabachi takes a step back. It subverts your expectation. It is specifically trying not to show its hand. And that sense of mystery, I think, is what has drawn me towards this story. I wanna know what's happening. I wanna know what the next chapter holds. This style of storytelling really reminds me of Quentin Tarantino-esque movies. 
Kill Bill, Pulp Fiction, The Hateful Eight. Whereas the narrative continues, you are drip fed information that brings the entire narrative together. It's that sense of mystery and intrigue as to what is going on and where we're going. It keeps you at the edge of your seat the entire time and Kagurabachi really draws that out of me. I mean even the fight scenes, the way they're depicted and paneled feel straight out of a Kill Bill section. I don't know if I can put it into words properly, but something about the way that this first section was paneled, the way the story was told was really enthralling to me. As for our main character Shinichiro, I totally understand people who say that he seems very boring and not very fleshed out as a main character. Most of the things he has done so far have been reactions to other characters, allowing them to speak and show their personalities. He seems more of a in the background kind of person, someone who's mainly observing than actually putting out his personality. A super contrast to other characters in other series like Luffy, Naruto, Ichigo, characters like that. And typically I wouldn't really like characters like Shinichiro either. I've spoken a lot in the past of how much I don't really like how passive Tanjiro can be in his own story. But in Shinichiro's defense, I will say there is one aspect of his character that I found very interesting and hope they flourish in future chapters. That being the scene where he is entering the city looking for sorcerers and talking to his father's old friend, he wants to speak to the mafia members and hopefully ask them for information on where he can find the people he's looking for. As we viewers already know from previous scenes, these mafia guys aren't the nicest people in the world. But Shinichiro doesn't know that. He suggests that they just go up and ask them for the information and hopefully they can handle the situation more diplomatic. And then is immediately greeted with the reality of their situation and the people that they're dealing with. Being asked the question, what if these mafia guys are total scumbags? This leads into the scenes of Shinichiro cutting down these mafia members with ease and forcing their leader to tell him where the sorcerers are with every intent to kill him once he's done getting his answers. It is this scene that kind of shows Shinichiro's naivete. He doesn't really seem to fully understand what humanity is capable of yet. Even though he comes off as very dejected, cold-blooded, there's still a sense of a kid in there somewhere, some innocence inside of his character that was immediately pushed down the moment he realized who these mafia people were and the things that they have done. If the story is capable of turning this into a very character growth style moment and showing different instances where this comes up, or maybe Shinichiro learns a lesson and gives us more about who he is as a character, I honestly would be very fascinated to see something like that. But of course, only time will tell. As for me, I thought this was a pretty decent chapter. There was a lot of things I like about it, but I totally understand all of the issues that many people had with it. Personally, if I had to give it a score, I'd give it about a 7 out of 10. Not the greatest, but good enough for me to want to see a chapter 2. Will this be the next big thing? It's really early to say, and honestly, this will just come down to sales, whether or not people are resonating with the story. But as a consumer, I can only hope that this series continues long enough for me to really sink my teeth into it. So I hope for the best.